قال الله في كتابه العزيز يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا ت... ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما We praise Allah Praising Allah is to at the same time imbibe what is called madh a type of praise and shukr at the same time and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deserving of this so we praise Allah we seek Allah's help we seek Allah's guidance and we seek refuge in Allah azza wa jal from the evils of our own souls of our nafs and from the evils of our bad deeds and we bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger and servant. And we send praise and benedictions upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his beloved family and companions all together. Allah says in his glorious Quran, O you who believe, have consciousness of Allah and grant him his right. And within granting him his right, do not die except in a state of submission to him and him alone. That's what a Muslim is. He also says in his glorious Quran, O you who believe, have this reverence of him, be mindful of him, and say words which hit the mark, meaning speak truthfulness, speak kindly, speak words of justice. Therefore, he will correct your actions. And within correcting your actions, he will forgive you and I of our sins and our wrongdoers. And whoever obeys, obeys Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has truly won the ultimate victory. So today we'd like to give a khutbah insha'Allah with the tawfiq of Allah about sustainability of the earth and what is our role within that. Generally, because some of us or most of us, especially the newer generation, have grown up inside of this country and so we're used to what is called decadence. We're used to having everything. Running water inside of our homes, gas, electricity, cars. And so because of this decadence, we don't realize the things, the way that these things have an impact on our world. And it's extremely important for you and I to understand what is our role in taking care of this earth that Allah has established us in as caretakers, a khalifa. You and I should not ever think of ourselves or think of others, oh, they'll just take care of it. Somebody else will do it. Someone else will make the world green. They're working on something to make the earth blue. But what about you? And I, so I challenge you all today. After this khutbah, which we will see that Allah has established us and how he's honored the human being actually, hopefully you and I will be more inspired to care for this earth that much more. Another thing before we continue. When we look around this world, my dear brothers and sisters, if we don't come together and learn to have community amongst one another. If we don't know how to share, if we don't know how to speak to one another, if we don't know how to garden, which Allah sent us here to do. Therefore, that's how we get to know Allah through his creation. Isn't that correct? But when is the last time that we've connected with that? When is the last time that we've connected with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? For verily, there are signs in his creation. We shouldn't want to get used to this monotonous world of where everything is just given to us and we soak it all in because we'll be asked about what it is that we did on this earth 
and specifically in terms that you may have heard before our carbon footprint. And did we take any steps to ever implement any change within our households? But as a famous poet once said, all I gotta really say is they don't really care about us. So within that meaning, if we don't care about ourselves, if we don't establish true community, if we don't learn the Sharia and the implementation of it, if we don't take care of our households, you think this government is going to take care of us? Do you think they truly care for us? I look at every single individual uh, that's inside of here and I care for you and I want the best for you as I want the best for myself. I want the best for your children as I want the best for my child. And the same with the spouses. And being men, first and foremost, it is incumbent upon us to know how to protect our families. And anywhere you ever go and travel, what is it that you need? You will always go to a place where there's a water source and a place for you to be able to have vegetation, food. You would never go to a place that doesn't have any of these things because you won't be able to sustain yourself. I saw a beautiful quote that Imam Zayd Shakir had posted and he quoted Ibn Ataullah and he said in one of his aphorisms that there are two main things that every single creation needs and without, and without those two things nothing else would matter having children wouldn't matter having a spouse wouldn't matter and those two things is the creation of life itself with, uh, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And then also the sustainability of that life. And that's why the Sharia is there to protect us and our families, our honor, our lineage. So we'll get to the Quran so that we'll be inspired inshallah to want to take a high stand for the place that Allah has put us in. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة فالله so سبحانه وتعالى he has a conversation amongst the angels and he tells them that truly I'm going to create a successor, a Khalifa. A term that many of us are familiar with. And within creating this Khalifa, let's understand what this word means first. A Khalifa is a successor. Someone who comes after something. Like a father, and then our fathers pass, may Allah grant us salam wa afia, but this is a natural state of life. And then that son or daughter is the successor of that parent. And so we've come as a successor or a custodian. And what do custodians do? Any of us who've ever been inside of a elementary or whatever place that we've ever seen, we've seen that door that says uh, custodian's office, which means they go to work. They, care of the, they take care of the premises, correct? So continuing, the angels, they respond to Allah and they don't respond in a type of uh, contentious way, meaning battling Allah. But just like any creation of Allah, they understand some things and there's things that they don't understand. And so the angels respond, they say, May you see do fiha wa yes fi kud dima wa nahnu nu sabihu bi hamdika wa nu kaddisulak. So the angels they say, Oh Allah, are you going to now put someone inside of that place of the earth who is just going to cause corruption on it? Like the things that we see today. Not only just with killing and taking the lives of others, but pollution carbon footprints, deforestation, salinization of the earth, which means just like how if any of us come from the East Coast or have been there, when they put salt on the street, how the salt soaks up the water so you can be able to drive on the pavement. But that's happening inside of our lands. So what about our food sources coming in the future? 
So these angels, they say, will you create such a creation that will cause corruption in the land and shed blood, which we're doing just as well. As we, we praise you and we glorify and extol your praise, we always worship you. So before we go into our next verse, the angels have what's called, what, what I call PTAD, post-traumatic angelic disorder. Now before we get into the next, episode, uh, the, the next verse, why is that? It's because the angels are questioning Allah because what? There was a creation before the placement. There was a Khalifa on this earth before the human creation, correct? And that was the jinn. And as most of us may know or may not know, the jinn lives approximately a thousand years on this earth uh, before the human beings. And within that, they had a war. They would kill and they would shed blood, just as the angels are saying. Right? That post-traumatic stress disorder is because Allah sent them to go and separate all the jinn onto different mountains and islands of the earth. So they're like, again with this? We got to do this again? So they're questioning because they don't know and they don't understand. And they understand the virtue of life. So Allah, he then says, and this is where he honors us. And you and I must take this to heart and really live and imbibe this inside of our hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says, truly I know that which you do not know, angels. And going forth he said, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَاؤُلَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ So now Allah, along with honoring us and defending us in a sense, right? Because this is His new, his new creation. And not to anthropomorphize, uh, promor, uh, anthropomorphize with Allah, but in a sense just so that we can understand, right? Have you ever created something and you've been asked about the thing that you've created? Like my son, he came up to me and he drew a drawing. And I said, son, what is this? Is this a dog? He said, no, it's a shark. Right? So you see how you can have the creation confused, whatever of what a person had created. And so, where Allah honors us, He says that truly He taught Adam. Insan, you and I, we have the ability to have aql. And He taught Adam, peace be upon him, the names of all things of, of creation. And so within teaching them these names, Allah, He places all of these things in front of the malaika, in front of the angels. And Allah says, well, if you're truthful, if you know what you're talking about, if you know my new creation so much so, then tell me what these things are. So now the angels become stunned. And they glorify and they witness the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because like every single creation, they are limited in their knowledge. And so they say, قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ They say, glory be to you, O Allah. There is no blemish, there is no uh, dot, there is no speck. There is nothing wrong with you. You are all perfect, O Allah. And they say, truly, there is no, there is not a single article of knowledge with us except that which you have taught us. We only have that which you have given us. And then they praise him as they do and as we should all the time. They say, truly, O oh Allah, you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. So alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, what we wanted to take from this first khutbah it's to know that the honor that Allah subhanahu wa, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you and I. And that's the gift of knowledge. So you and I should go and seek knowledge of how to take care of the earth. You and I should go and seek knowledge because it is upon our, uh, it is our responsibility as khulafa'ul arub, as vicegerents, as successors, as custodians of the earth to go and seek this knowledge. 
and then implement it into our household and within the world. فَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِطُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So when the Qur'an is read, make sure you listen and you pay attention, and perhaps Allah will be merciful to you and I. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر. So when we read the Quran, we seek refuge in Allah from the evil and accursed Shaytan. In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful, Allah swears by time. And he says, truly, in sand, you and I are in a state of loss unless, except for those who practice doing, who, who believe and practice doing good deeds and encourage people towards the truth and towards being patient. I have said my speech for the first khutbah, so I seek refuge, I seek Allah's forgiveness on my behalf and for yours and for the entirety of the ummah from every single sin that has been committed from Allah uh, and, and, and truly, so see, take this time right now to seek the forgiveness of Allah for the things that you've wasted in your life, for the things that you haven't taken advantage of and reconcile this within your heart for after this that you will implement insha'Allah. For truly he is the all-forgiving, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen, Wal Aqiba Tulil Muttaqeen, Wala Udwana, Illa Ala Ala Zalimeen, Wanashadu Alla Ilaha Ilma Allahu Wahdahu La Sharikala. له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. We praise Allah, the Lord of the worlds. He is a safety net for those who have consciousness of Him. And there is no animosity from Allah upon us except for those who practice oppression. Oppression comes in many forms, whether we practice oppression of ourselves, on ourselves by committing sins and not doing, not returning to Allah with sincere repentance, tawbah, or we take the rights of someone else, or of an animal, or of the land. And we bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. And Allah has power and kingdom over all things, and he is all capable. So before we head out or before we make salah, there are just some things that we wanted to reflect on and get a word from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, an al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala, inna dunya khudratun, hulwatun khudratun, wa inna allaha yastakh, لِفُكُمْ فَيَنْظُرْ فَيَنْظُرُوا كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that truly uh, this world is green and beautiful and it's luscious so take care of it because truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has made you khulafa He has made you vicegerents of the earth and he watches how you fare within being a vicegerent, a caretaker of the earth. 
So again, just a few quick reminders. We should go out into the booths out there and make sure we spend a time and take a few pamphlets to make ourselves more aware about how can we start within our homes first and foremost of the implementation of taking care of this world. Because this is the future of your children and your generations. And learn how to also imbibe and inculcate love within this ummah by taking care of one another. We live in an atomized society where we're so fractured off. Sometimes we only come to Jumu'ah and Alhamdulillah, that's a blessing. But we should try to do as much as we can to get with one another and strengthen the bonds of ukhuwa, of brotherhood and sisterhood. May Allah grant us a true repentance. <coughs> May Allah grant us true guidance. May Allah grant us a sincere heart who sincerely cares about this earth and benefiting from it. May Allah make us people who recognize and witness him through his creation. May Allah make us of those who are truly grateful and not of the kafirin. Not kafirin necessarily meaning disbelievers, but being ungrateful. May Allah guide us to his straight path. May Allah resurrect us on Yawmul Qiyamah and we, have to re and we don't receive any hisab from him. And we're not judged. May we, may we pass with flying marks on that day and that we are standing underneath the shade of Allah's throne subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we get to drink from the hawd and from the blessed hands of our beloved Mustafa, the chosen one, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the same for our sisters from his beloved daughter, Fatima al zahra May Allah guide us to the straight path and make us sincere. And my dear brothers and sisters, please, please don't allow this khutbah to go in one ear and, one out, and out the other. As you, as you leave here, and because the decadence again, the comfortability of home life and sustainability is there for us. So what about the future? And most likely it is the near future. It is time for us to come together. Inna Allah amara bi thalathin wa nahi anith thalath. Inna Allah ya'amaru bil adli bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanhi anil fahshai wal munkari wal dhaghi ya'idhukum la'allakum yadhakkaroon tadhakkaroon Allah commands towards justice, doing good and being generous to those who are close to you and he forbids that which is shameful, blameworthy and oppressive which are things like not caring about your carbon footprint and what you add to the earth in its destruction يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and he teaches you so that you may take heed. أُذْكُرُ اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمَ يَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوهُ عَلَى نِعَمِهِ يَزِدْكُمْ وَلَا ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ Remember Allah much, the, the grand, and he will remember you. And grant and give Allah his thanks and sure, from the blessings that you have. And surely he will increase you and I in the blessings and bounties. For the remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing. Aqimu salah.